Hello and welcome fellow coders! Thanks for joining me today on my very first video of what is going to be a whole Golang tutorial series. I will be creating a complete beginner's guide for Go. So if you want to learn the basics of the language from start to finish, you have come to the right place. And make sure to follow me on my social media so you always know when new content comes out. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. The very first thing we are going to look at is the famous Hello World example. I know, that is always the very first thing you get to see when you are learning a new programming language. But still, I think it's a good way of explaining a few things about the language right up front. It will not only teach you the structure of every single Go file, but also the basics of every single Go project out there. In Go, the famous Hello World example looks like this. Let's break it down line by line, shall we? The first line of every single Go file is always the package declaration. Every Go file needs to lie within a package. This has to do with how the Go compiler works. I will not go in any detail here. It would be out of the scope for a beginner's tutorial. But for now, let's keep in mind that every single Go file needs a package. In our case, that is the main package. The main package is the one that tells the Go compiler that the package should be compiled as an executable program. So if you write executable applications, we always need a main package. Next, the imports. We need to import every single other package that we use within this file. In our case, it is the format package of the Go standard library, which is used for the print line function right here. So if you want to use functionality of other packages, we always have to import the package first. We can add a second import by an additional import line. Let's say we would like to print out another line, but this time use the lock package. In this case, we first need to import the lock package. After that, we can make use of all functions the lock package provides us, like for instance the print line function. If I save my file though, we can see that my IDE formats it and brings my imports together in a block within braces. Bringing imports together like this is actually a best practice. This is why Visual Studio Code does that for us. The imports are also ordered alphabetically. Next up, we have the main function. The main function is the one that gets executed as soon as we run the application. I will get into greater details of functions later in this tutorial. If we want to run the code, we can do this by typing go run main.go into the terminal and press enter. By running the code, we can see that everything that is defined in the main function gets executed. In our case, it's the format print line as well as the lock print line function. If we would rename the function to, let's say, test and run the code again, we get the error message that the compiler was not able to find the main function in the main package. So we always need a main function within the main package. Now that we have learned about the basic structure of a Go file, let's dive a little deeper and talk about variables. Variables are used to store values, for instance numbers, text or true-false statements. In Go, variables are declared using the var keyword followed by the name and the type of the variable. In this case, the type string is a text. Technically, strings are a little more than that, but for now, let's just stick with strings representing text. This step is called the declaration of a variable. To set the value of the variable, we first write the name of the variable followed by an equal sign and the value we want to store. This step is called initialization of a variable. The data flow is always from right to left. It stores the value from right into the variable on the left. Make sure to keep this in mind. If we want to declare a second variable of the same type, Golang allows us to use the same line we use to declare the language, but only if the type of the variable is the same. If we want to declare a variable of another type, let's say an integer, we need to write it in a separate line. Let's set the value of the name to my name. To make use of the variable, we can use the format print line function. First, let's print out my name and second, the language I'm learning. If we run the code, we can see that both sentences get printed to the console. And in both cases, the variables get used. So if you change the language from Golang to, let's say, Go and run the code again, the output changes as well. Great, right? We declared and initialized two variables and used them in the print line function. But we can optimize this a bit. Golang provides us with an ability to initialize variables during the declaration step. This way, we can set the values for name and language in the same line they are introduced. If we do that, we can get rid of the type of the variable, since Golang already knows that the name and the language are strings from the initialization. But we have to make sure that the number of declared variables and the number of initialized values are the same. If we remove the name, the IDE already tells us that it cannot initialize two variables with one. So let's put the name back. Now that the variables are already getting initialized in the declaration step, we can get rid of the two lines right here. 
there is actually an even shorter way of assigning variables in Go, and that is by using the short assignment statement. We can use it by simply omitting the var keyword and add a colon in front of the equal sign. But you have to be cautious though. This type of variable declaration can only be used inside of functions. If we want to declare variables outside of functions, the short assignment statement does not work. We need the var keyword. Variables that are declared on a package level, so not within a function, can be used everywhere within the package. In our case, the main package. So for instance, we can use the last name variable in our main function, even though it was declared on a package level. See, it prints out the last name as well. But variables that are declared within a function can only be used inside it, nowhere else. This is called scoping. Variables can be declared at different scopes, the package level and the function level. And that is it for today's very first lesson of the Golang programming language. We learned how the basic structure of a Go file looks like and how variables get declared and initialized. Make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any new content. You can also follow me on my social media to get sneak peeks of new content, so you know what the next video will be about before the rest of the world. And of course give this video a like if you liked it. Obviously. Until next time, keep on coding. <laughs>